Hello everyone, and welcome back to Fableheim and the continuation of my Mistover class deep dive series. Up today, we have the Witch. If you're not interested in seeing every single one of her abilities and some potential theory crafting involving them, here is your TLDR. The Witch is your typical glass cannon multi-target obliterator. Row attacks? Check. Column attacks? Check. Cross attacks? Sure. Why not? She's here to look cute and kill all the monsters, basically. While she does focus on AoE attacks, she also has some useful singular target abilities, such as a buff purge, a single target damage debuffer, but that's not my point. My point is that she is a purely offensive character. With the TLDR out of the way, let's get in to the Witch's abilities. The first is her ability that everyone has, her deal damage, cost no resource ability, Star Bullet. This inflicts damage equal to 100% of your attack on a single enemy. This can be used from the middle or back column against any enemy in any column. Pretty standard, useful to have to hit those pesky casters in the final column, but other than that, no big deal. Her next ability is actually a buff called Lapless's Devil. This gives party members in one column a 25% evasion increase buff. This can be used in either the front or middle column and will affect any friendly column going down. I call those rows, but I don't know if that's correct. I do have this ability unlocked, but that's because this witch came with it. I have not found a whole lot of use for it. This could potentially be very useful against enemies that have low hit rating already, or just do monstrous amounts of damage if they do get hit. I think it would be a little bit more pragmatic to just lower enemy attack instead, which can be done in a lot of different ways. Her next ability is called Wind Cutter. This inflicts damage equal to 75% of your attack on enemies in one column, Give yourself a 25% speed increase buff. This can be used in the middle or back column and will affect enemies, all enemies in either the middle or back column. This is a good ability. I currently don't have it slotted in because I found that its damage is not so impressive, but you could be using this primarily for the speed because the more speed the witch has, the sooner she can go. But if you were going to use this, I would consider using it just for the speed increase because the faster that the Witch is, the more frequently she can use her abilities in a turn, which could be devastating. The next ability of the Witch is one of her single target abilities called Frostbind. Inflict damage equal to 165% of your attack on one enemy and a 27 evasion decrease debuff, 90% chance. Have one, give one enemy even, a 27% speed decrease debuff, 90% chance. This is one of my favorite abilities of the Witch. It's amazing. Decreasing evasion and speed with one ability, very potent. It can be used from the middle or back row on enemies in the front or middle row. So again, this is more targeted towards melee sort of characters, and reducing their turn order can be pretty good. The next of her abilities is called Flame Spiral. This inflicts damage equal to 40% of your attack on enemies in one column, and continuous damage equal to 40% of your attack with an 80% chance. This can be used in the middle or back column, on all enemies in the front or middle column. I like this ability a lot, it's currently slotted in, even though I haven't upgraded it to rank 2. I think there's the potential for a very interesting bleed-oriented composition involving the Witch, the Onmyoji, the Shadowblade, and the Sister that could be a lot of fun. I'm actually going to test it out when I record footage for this series, which I should probably do soon. But yes, good ability, stamp of approval. So I got it backwards. Row is when it's like this. Column is when it's up and down. Okay. Inflict damage equal to 40% of your attack on all enemies in one row, 80% chance of causing stun. This can be used from the front or middle column. It will affect all enemies in a row. This is an excellent ability. I currently don't have it slotted, but there are a lot of abilities in the game that cause stun. There are not very many that cause AoE stuns. An ability to stun an entire row means you could stun a melee character and his support at the same time. Very powerful. I should probably learn it eventually. The next ability is called Dispel Magic. This can be used from the middle or back row against any enemy target. Disable all buffs on an enemy with an 80% chance. This could be incredibly useful later in the game, but it competes in my mind with the Grim Reaper's ability to steal buffs. I think it's called Stealing Luck, which seems far more useful to me. I don't know. I just have a bias toward the Grim, Re the Grim Reaper, so 
This one's kind of on the fence for me, but I can see its potential as being absolutely crazy. I do have a funny side story about that, but not enough time today to tell it. Maybe I'll tell it someday. The next ability that is locked for me is called Ego Strike. This inflicts damage equal to 150% of your attack on one enemy, and a 25% resistance to weaken with an 80% chance. Now you can see weaken over on the left under specialities. We have 72 resistance to it. I'm pretty sure weaken is a type of debuff. I think that's just any debuff. So this will allow... The Eco Strike could facilitate your Grim Reaper to be even more terrifying, which is something I'm on board with. So I really should have it slotted, but I really like Frostbind, and I kind of think the two fit in the same role. This can be used in the front or middle column, and can be used against any one enemy. Forgot to mention that. The next ability for the Witch is called Chaos Blast. This inflicts damage equal to 110% of your attack on enemies in a cross. It can be used in the middle or back column, and again affects enemies in a cross. This can be devastating. Absolutely horrifying. You can see it's one of the abilities that I've leveled up, and that's because it's just good. No complaints about this ability. It's just good. The next ability that she has, and the final ability, is called Wild Surge. Give yourself an ignore position slash MP buff. Give yourself a 25% increase speed buff. This can be used in the front or middle column. And again, if you're in the front or middle column, it will affect you. This is kind of a situational ability, but it can be very useful for the witch because of one of her jinxes, which I'll talk about near the end of the video. I do have this slotted, but I think it's more of a, if you know that you're going to be thrown around a lot, this could be very helpful. It can just ignore any position penalties and more speed's good. We've gone over it before, but more speed means the witch does things faster, which means things usually die faster. The first of the cooperative abilities that I do not have is called Time Blink. Inflict damage equal to 60% of your attack on enemies in one row. 80% chance of causing stun requires a Shadow Blade in front of you. Hide a selected target using another skill while hiding disables hide. This can be used on in any column, on any foe row, and probably on any friendly square for the hide effect. Now, as you can see that because it's locked, I've never actually used this, but I have mixed thoughts on this. This could be very useful if you have someone that went earlier in the turn that is really in trouble, or if, like, the witch is acting because she got one of the speed boosts before the rest of your friends has had a turn. This could be useful to shut down enemies and to hide the person that's in trouble. It will really, again, just most of these come down to... Is this how you want to use your one cooperative ability for this turn? I think most of the time the answer for Time Blink will be no. The next of their cooperative abilities is called Destiny Change. Inflict damage equal to 225% of your attack on one enemy, with a 50% chance of exchanging position, HP percentage, and buff slash debuffs. Requires a Grim Reaper behind you. This can be used in any column on enemy target on any enemy target square. This is terrifying absolutely horrifying. I've used this ability once, and you might think, holy crap, 225% of your attack on one enemy is a lot of attack. And you'd be correct. The terrifying part is that when you land that 225%, you've usually reduced your enemy to death, and you will swap your HP before his death is calculated. So both times that I've tried to make this work, I have swapped into 0% HP. Now, the way death, work, death works in this game, you don't actually die. You just are in a critical state, and the next hit will kill you. So I'm lucky that it hasn't killed Akasha yet, but it's risky. It's very risky. I think that this could be useful. It doesn't say you can't use on bosses, so this would be useful on bosses, depending on how the math works out. And probably just bosses. The next ability is called Star Striker, the final of the Witch's cooperative abilities. It inflicts damage equal to 150% of your attack on all enemies, and recover HP equal to 25% of the damage. Requires a Ronin next to you. This can be used from any column on all enemies. Obviously, I haven't been able to test this yet because the Ronin is not in the demo version of the game, but this makes me happy. 
I'm excited to use this ability. And the reason is because the witch has a tendency to get herself in danger. We're going to talk about that very soon. But the ability for the witch to heal herself is magical. Glorious. I want it. Now next, her expedition ability is called Time Stop. It costs 16 food, making it one of the more expensive expedition abilities, but it stops time and immobilizes nearby monsters for four turns. It will teleport the expedition core to a random location. If you watched my comprehensive introduction video, you'll know that I used this ability twice, and that was the first time I ever used it in that video. You got my live, unfiltered reaction of, wow, this is good. A little jab at myself. <laughs> But yeah, Time Stop is really fun. It can get you in a little bit more trouble than you were already in. But again, the monsters are immobilized for four more turns, so usually you can get away from it. The only issue would be if you're trying to get to that one spot that you haven't explored without walking across the entire map, draining your food and luminosity. You, can, you might have to roll the die a few times to get even close to it. Now, about the Jinxes, I mentioned this a few times while going through her abilities, but the Witch is the only class in the demo that has her own unique Jinx. Wild magic. As you can see, it's marked as white because I don't think it's bad and I don't think it's good. But it may cause an additional effect, wild magic in parentheses. When it says an additional effect, it means an absolutely random, nonsensical additional effect that may or may not usually be moving. I can't tell you how many times the witch has gone first with her 110 speed, or at least second, and moved herself with, say, the Grim Reaper, who is a little bit slower. This has screwed up so many of my cooperative abilities that I personally think the witch is one of the cuttable options. Maybe. She does a lot of damage, but her utility is kind of lackluster. So she could be one of your options to cut. She could also be one of your options to empower, to make sure that the witch is just blowing things up is an option. And again, the bleed group that we'll be looking forward to soon. And by soon, I mean now. Welcome to the combat portion of this video. As always, before we get too far into it, I would like you to take a look at my group formation. Now, this is nothing special. We've gone over this before with the sister, but the whole point of this formation was to make sure that the sister could use love reversal to inflict bleed on everyone. Because the purpose of this quirky little composition was to bleed everything. And the witch played an important role in that. In fact, I would say that she played the most important role in that. And despite this composition being dedicated to burning down columns with a stacked up bleed beyond most forms of measurement, the witch still provided that powerful single target burst on demand with her frostbind. Of course, the shadow, my second shadow blade also provided that, but we'll talk more about that in uh, the shadow blade dedicated deep dive. So my thoughts on the witch. The witch is... As I mentioned, your very traditional glass cannon -y spell power obliterator. And she performs that job well. In this uh, series of testing, I was, of course, focusing on her ability to deal bleed damage, which is acceptable. I would say her and the Shadow Blade are both on par with that. But I still think where she really shines is her ability to just unload damage either on a single target or on a group. This convinced me only more of that. Her Frostbind was hitting for like 140 to 150 something. And she's not even really that well geared compared to some of my other characters like the Grim Reaper. But she just really went to town on everything. It made me a little proud. Now, of course, this the weakness of the witch is kind of twofold. One, she's very delicate. She is a delicate little flower that um, doesn't like being stepped on. So it's always a good idea to keep her protected one way or another, either by keeping her isolated or by using, bringing someone that has defensive utility to protect her in some capacity, in whatever capacity that may be. And of course, her other downside is that the witch is a bit whimsical. She employs wild magic, which means a series of unfortunate events could transpire if you're unlucky enough to roll the dice. I've mentioned it before, but there were a number of times, even during this testing, that the wild magic 
Jinx triggered her to move in a random location, which throws off everything because the sister has to be in front of her in order for her to use her cooperative ability that we were basically creating this formation around. So my final thoughts on the witch, she is a solid spellcaster. If you're looking for a spellcaster to deal damage, just sit in the back and lob spells at people and kill them, then the witch is going to do that job. Her few quirks may infuriate people, and if that is you, I do believe that the witch is cuttable. Whenever a character provides just raw DPS, no matter how good that raw DPS is, I think that they can be replaced by a character that provides more than just DPS. DPS and utility, or perhaps some form of utility, defensive utility that will enable someone else to be far more aggressive. One example that I'm very interested in testing is that the werewolf is classified as a tank, but he has a lot of aggressive abilities. So it'll be interesting to play a tank, technically, that is incredibly aggressive. And I think cutting the witch to help facilitate the werewolf's power is a potential option. So thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and that you learned something about the witch. If you did, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit that stupid bell so YouTube knows to notify you because there will be more Mistover content coming very soon. Bye bye